Hey, this is Shane from Performing TV. Today, we're cutting up our Nissan Leaf motor. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you new to this channel, this is my uh, project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. Now, those of you that have been watching for a while have seen that the space I have to work with is a lot less than uh, I previously hoped. And in order to get the motor to fit, we're gonna have to remove some of the superfluous uh, bits of metal. So this is a 2014 Nissan Leaf motor. In 2013, they changed the layout and put basically some extra metal on the motor in order to be able to stack the various components on top of each other. And this has meant that there are these extra pieces that are of no use to me uh, because I don't plan to put the motor back in the same way it was in the leaf, but are actually causing me a bit of pain because they're starting to bang off things as I try and put this into a position that I can use it. So we're gonna take an angle grinder and slowly chop away at the bits of metal that I don't think I need. Uh, this is a total experiment. I would say, please don't, don't, don't replicate this. Don't try this at home. Um, you will definitely void your warranty and your motor may or may not end up totally unusable. I'm hoping it will still be usable at the end of this, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, I've only got uh, an angle grinder and a cutoff disc, so we're going to do it that way. That means there will be certain pieces where it's a little bit more difficult to access, um, so I might have to just cut chunks out, um, you know, small chunks out to then access the next bit. But let's see how we get on. So we're going to start at the, the drive side of the motor, um, because it's the easiest, and there's actually almost a very clear line between what is usable metal on the motor and what is not needed. Um, so basically this entire section along here is purely a mount and there's nothing that I want from it. And you can actually see the points at which um, it goes from being a useful piece of metal to just the mount. And we can follow that line, hopefully pretty accurately. Now if you look from the back, it's not actually solid so it is just a series of ribs that uh, give it its structure so hopefully I'll be able to cut through that without too much uh, pain and suffering I'm not saying it's going to be easy but hopefully it'll uh, it'll work so let's get to it Have it one slightly neater 
front. I'll tidy it up in a while, probably off camera with a, a grinding disc just to smooth everything off, make sure I don't injure myself. But that's uh, quite a lot less metal to bang off things and cause problems. Heading in the right direction. All right, moving over to the next side of the motor. Um, this one we need to be a bit more careful about because we've actually got the uh, point at which we access the um, the power going into the motor on this side. So I'm going to I'm not going to try and do this one in one go. I'll just section it out and um, see how much we can take away uh, before we get into trouble. So as you can see, we've got kind of main parts of the motor here, which I don't really want to touch. Um, I'm just going for the mounting pieces. Um, so it'll be kind of cuts along here, and then we're going to try and get, get rid of kind of overhangs like this and just make it as tight as possible to the, the shape of the motor.
All right, so again, we'll need to tidy this up a bit um, and make sure there's no sharp edges, but I think we're doing pretty good. Um, taking a lot of metal off, but left a couple of the key mounting points uh, just to make sure that we can actually mount the motor. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, I would say don't try this at home. Um, it's a little bit sketchy, some of the things I was doing here. It'll still, still work, but it, it doesn't look pretty. Um, warranty is definitely voided. And yeah, the things we do to get our projects to work, eh? So there we have it. One slightly smaller and slightly lighter Nissan Leaf motor. Hopefully this will allow us to maneuver it inside the space I've got a little bit easier. Um, I haven't gotten any rid of any of the main mounting points, they were just the pieces that were designed to hold the inverter. So obviously I'll have to do something to, to place the inverter somewhere in the, the space as well. Um, again, I would really not recommend doing this uh, on your own project unless it's absolutely necessary. And if you do, um, don't necessarily follow what I did. Do your own checks, investigations. Um, there's a couple of bits where I cut a little bit too close to things. They'll be fine, but I'll have to grind them out uh, to, to tidy them up, as well as kind of grinding these edges down to make sure that the um, everything's neat and tidy and doesn't risk it causing any injury to anyone. Um, but yeah, that should send us in the right direction now. I'm, as I say, going to do a fair bit of work off camera to tidy this up and then we'll get this inside uh, in a future video and uh, try and see how it actually fits in the space rather than uh, a lot of the guesswork and estimation that I've been doing. So, all I can say I think is thanks for joining us on this journey. If you're not already subscribed and you like what you're seeing, please consider subscribing. Um, definitely leave comments. I know I haven't been great at replying to all of them, but I have read everything and I've taken on board the ideas that um, people have been putting forward, which has been absolutely fantastic. And as I say, one of the, the great things about doing this. Um, but yeah, till next time, thanks for joining us and uh, yeah, see you then.